important for me to feel connected to the patient, that the patient feels safe and cared for. And, um, you know, I've often said, and I've said this to students primarily, that patients don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. And that much of the work that we do in medicine is about caring for the patient and that that enables you to really understand why they're coming to you and it enables you therefore to get to the to the proper diagnosis. So I really felt that that was again the most satisfying and fruitful part of medicine to be able to have that relationship. It's not always easy to do for so many reasons but to me that to me that's the essence of medicine really caring about the patient and understanding where they come from and and what's bringing them at the moment it's also um, interesting how people sometimes come with a diagnose in their hands an accurate diagnose and says you know i have this problem this is threatening my my health or even my life sometimes and i want you to help me for this but on the free flow, without the script of, of, a, of a healing, it turns out that this deeper level, deeper section of the being of the patient has a totally different priority list of things to be taken care of. So even if the person comes maybe with a tumor in a, in a, in a certain organ, the things that start to come up are different and for something that I cannot track exactly, need to be taken care of before getting to that point because it's a chain of connections and events. So, um, you know, I'm not like a surgeon that comes and cuts and go for that point and doesn't see the rest. I just flow with what comes. So I just try to flow and I see that on the process of a certain uh, healing, the person not only gets the problem solved, but retrieves a lot of its own joy and lightness and happiness, retrieves its heart. Sometimes I, I have people that come only for stress, you know, very uh, uh, hungry uh, uh, actuators for success, you know, and what they are asking me is, help me with this problem to go back to do what I'm doing all the time. And something happens in the process of the healing that the problem gets solved, but the person turns out to end on a different place of consciousness at the end. And this is without saying anything because my work is not cognitive. I'm not teaching them about life. And then, you know, I have all the time these releases of people in the middle of the session running to the, to the toilet to, to, to vomit, you know, or, or, or explosion of emotional uh, 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 content that has been caught. And that, that brings uh, um, another level of healing because it's not only about healing the body, you know. A number of years ago, as a clinician and as a teacher at, at the hospital, I uh, put together a proposal to start a comprehensive women's health care center where many different practitioners would be, including practitioners from different specialties as well as people who were involved in nutrition and physical rehabilitation. And so really trying to meet all the needs of the patient, both physical and emotional and mental and trying to imagine what all those needs would be. And by recognizing that, I think that we have tapped into a patient population that is interested and willing to know more about themselves and wants to help themselves and be empowered. And that's one of our main goals in the Women's Health Center, to help empower the patients to take care of themselves and to do the things they need to do. Well, I can say this. Sometimes people come from physical problems and I approach it as a holistic uh, healing, but something happens with the patient that they open up to other psychic levels of understanding and possibilities besides the problem. And, this, and I, I don't have a, 
strategy for that. It just can't happen by itself. And I think that in, in many ways what we do is very, very similar. I think that the practices are somewhat different, but I think in many ways they're very similar. We get our data different ways, but we come to the same kinds of conclusions. And it just reinforces what I have, have felt, which is that there is a complementary role for physical healing arts in the treatment of human disease. So my tools are mainly um, energies that I feel are, are borrowed from nature, that they like to be expressed through, through, through the healer. And um, what I'm witnessing at the same time that I'm doing is that those colors and those patterns start to become harmonic. And then I cannot predict exactly how that is going to be shown for the patient. I just tell the person, okay, just go back to your everyday life. Um, sometimes I get some precise uh, uh, um, uh, acknowledgements, either from my experience or either for kind of a sudden message about doing certain things or taking some natural medicines. But most of the time I tell, pe I tell people, just go back and observe and let me know how the symptoms go. Um, and I tell them all the time, ask your doctor. Um, you know, I'm very pragmatic and practical. Uh, I come from a scientific uh, um, formation, and I think that we are on a very interesting moment of, of civilization, that we can have a very important integration of tools. You know, rationalism has produced amazing capacities of understanding matter. Mm. And, and uh, I'm not trying to, to, to make a guessing uh, game, you know? I'm not trying to pick what the pa patient has. I mean, I'm asking for the diagnosis and we go faster. I think part of, you know, practicing over many years is coming to the realization that not everything can be objectivized and not everything will lend itself to, you know, being able to measure it in the blood and therefore track it and so on. We try to do that. We try to compartmentalize as much as we can into disease states that look familiar, where we can say, okay, this looks like a particular disease. It may not be precisely it, but this is what it resembles. Because that helps us to prognosticate, and it also guides us a little bit in terms of therapy. Uh, but you can't always do that, and some of the art of medicine is sort of realizing when you're sort of stuck out there and you don't have the way to compartmentalize it and you're trying to just feel it for what it is and therefore draw your own conclusions. The non-cognitive healings, and I believe that's a nice word for, for talking about them until another one, another better one appears. Uh, access what is happening in the patient body and in the patient's life, uh, jump in the mind. I believe that's also one of the reasons why I get fast results, because I'm not fighting with the mind. I'm not spending energy mm -hmm. trying to jump the tricks and the labyrinths of the mind. Uh, and I'm accessing and I'm doing something. I, I have this dialogue with this other layer. I don't know how to call it. Unconscious, subconscious, soul. I don't care, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a space. And in that space, sometimes the patient, that part brings things, asks for, for, for certain kind of work on certain areas. Um, sometimes I get flashes of images that has went through the patient eyes in the past, like memories or places. Sometimes I deliver them and, 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 and we try to see what it is. Sometimes the patient has it. But at the end, I, said, I say all the time, I don't want to invest energy in understanding how the knot was knotted. Most of the time, we don't even have time for that. I just care about unknotting, unknotting. Yeah.